In this article on an age of diaspora centre development, we ask two key questions. First, why is there now rousing interest in the contributions of diasporas to the development of migrant sending countries? Second, why is this diaspora turn so pervasive in the global south? We situate our analysis of diaspora centred development in the changing approach of Western power towards governing international spaces. The current enthusiasm for diaspora centred development has to be understood in the backdrop of macroeconomic reforms to address underdevelopment in the global south. Diasporas are now considered to be an asset or tool useful to migrant sending states, such as when they send remittances or play the role of philanthropists, tourists, volunteers, investors, mentors, knowledge brokers and, and lobbyists. Our analysis of diaspora centred development engages with the theological genealogy of Western political constructs that Italian philosopher Giorgio Agamben presents in his 2011 book, The Kingdom and the Glory. He argues for the need to understand how sovereign power and biopower combine through economic practices, that is, the management or administration of a household, to craft providential design. In the article, we use Agamben's analytics of government to yield insights on the role of Western power in shaping the current diaspora term. We profile three interventions, the World Bank's Knowledge for Development Programme, K4D, the US-based International Diaspora Engagement Alliance, IDEA, and the EU-UN Joint Migration and Development Initiative, Migration for Development Project, GMDI, M4D. We argue that such projects implemented in the Global South are in fact conceived by and operate in the shadow of powerful sovereign states such as the US State Department or international organisations that exercise aspects of sovereignty like the World Bank and the European Union. But these institutions posture through acts of biopower by assembling and mobilising categories such as diaspora, nation, ethnicity, religion and citizen towards collective action. Western institutions rely on biopower and rule through assemblages which discipline distant subjects. Their ambitions nonetheless are no less hegemonic. Projects like K4D, IDEA, and GMDI M4D reflect the co-constitution of sovereign power and biopower in the governmental machine of the West. They constitute a new breed of mission civilistress. They embody a number of Western epistemes, rationalities, mentalities and visualisations which work to civilise unruly, corrupt, rogue and failing states in the global south using Western prescriptions of order. We conclude our article by calling attention to the need to interrogate more expansively the complex and variegated articulations of sovereign power and biopower over time and space. We also signal in the conclusion that diasporas can frustrate the intended outcomes of Western biopolitical projects by engaging with such projects to procure resources for their own political agendas and economic interests. We invite you to read the full article and to consider how our discussion of sovereign and biopower through diaspora-centred development might speak to your own work, whether theoretically or as practitioners. Do get in touch by email if you have feedback for us. We can be contacted at mark.g.boyle at nuim.ie or elaine.ho at nuis.edu.sg Thank you for listening.